Uh, second part of the muscle stuff then, uh, sliding filament model or sliding filament theory. This is the, the mechanism for how the actin and myosin um, slide past each other and this idea of the myosin almost acting like little uh, moving, um, little heads moving and pulling the actin along and releasing and, and reattaching. Okay, um, and, and that's how the, the two things work. It is, um, it's not a perfect model because we, we're not sure it exactly works like this, but it, it seems to be something along these lines. Um, again, it's another problem with uh, naming things. I think that's a difficult part of this. Let's just refresh our memories. Here's the individual unit or sarcomere with actin filaments and the myosin with the uh, Z lines on the sides, M line down the middle, I, A, H, A, I, I, A, H, I. If you watched the uh, the video on um, muscle fibres, you remember that. If you haven't, well, it's off. Um, so there's the actin, there's the myosin. So what's actually happening here, the sliding filament theory is, is what's happening in, in this um, A zone, really. Um, I suppose what's happening at this, this level of uh, the, the molecular level. So if we were to take um, a single strand of actin, so we've zoomed in on one of these actin strands, I've changed the colour now, but not to worry. Uh, it's actually made of three different things. Um, the, the first thing is it's called G-actin, okay, and it's, it's actually, if you look in your books, you'll see it's made of kind of protein and molecules like that, but I've just drawn it as a single band, it's, it's not important to us. Uh, and wrapped around that, just to confuse matters immensely, is something called tropomyosin. Why is it confusing? Well, we've already got myosin, but we've got something now called tropomyosin, which is wound around the outside. And attached to the tropomyosin is a molecule called troponin, or troponin. Not quite sure how you want to pronounce it, doesn't matter. You're not gonna have to pronounce it in an exam, are you? So G, uh, an actin filament is G-actin, tropomycin wrapped around it, and troponin. Now, um, the, the way that this operates uh, initially is on the basis of calcium. So if we have, uh, if you remember, the sarcolemma depolarizes, which causes sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium ions. Okay? The calcium ions attach to troponin. Uh, we should be familiar by now with the idea that um, when you start um, attaching molecules, when they, they start interacting with each other, changing shape is, is a common theme that will happen. The uh, troponin basically changes its shape, which mo uh, makes the tropomycin move. So the tropomycin moves out the way. And what the tropomycin is doing um, is it's covering up a binding site. It's covering up a site where, um, you know, can you imagine like a little Velcro pad if you like, where the myosin is going to attach. So the tropomyosin normally is in the way. When calcium is present, the troponin, it binds to troponin, which changes its shape, which pulls the tropomyosin out of the way. So it exposes these binding sites. Now the myosin, and this is, I think, the, the tricky bit to get your head around. Uh, the myosin have, uh, e e these myosin filaments have a, a head, okay? Uh, it, I don't know, it's kind of this shape. Let's imagine it like this shape. Okay, and normally, if you like, when your muscle is relaxed, relaxed, um, this, this piece of myosin has ADP and phosphate attached to it. Okay, so that's in its, if you like, in its, its resting state. Now, when this tropomyosin is moved out the way, that head can now attach to these binding sites. Okay, so if you like, it's normally sitting like that. What it will do, it will attach to the binding site, so it moves in and attaches. Let's just put that myosin head attaches. This is called forming a cross bridge, and it's a, a weak chemical bond between the two things. As it attaches, um, the ADP and phosphate, inorganic phosphate group, are released. Now, as that's released, it causes it, so it's, it's bound on, as it's the ADP and phosphate is released it causes it to change its shape. It causes it to do that, if you like. Because it's attached, what it will do is it will pull the whole thing along, okay? So the ADP is released, ADP and organic phosphate released, 
and that the so-called power stroke is when the head um, the, the head moves backwards and because it's attached it will take the entire um, actin molecule with it so there's the power stroke now it's actually quite stable in this uh, situation it's not going to do a whole lot it's, it's going to stay quite happily attached but that's no good for us because we need it to work again so at this point a TP reattaches or attach itself to the myosin okay that causes the head to release now if you don't do this stage if there's not enough ATP present that myosin will basically stay attached and it'll stay attached permanently um, this is really the cause of, of rigor mortis when um, after death an organism its muscles will, will stay contracted there's, there's no energy being supplied um, and you supply, no ATP is being supplied to release those muscles and put them into relaxation so it will stay contracted and it will stay like that for a few hours um, and eventually the, these things will just chemically start to break down anyway but, but that's what's causing it so the ATP is important in the release of the myosin head now once it's been released we're still at the moment, if you like, in, in this kind of situation. So we've now got um, the myosin head is still in that bent back situation. It's released from the actin and it's got ATP attached, but it's still in that bent back situation. We want it to get back to this. How does it do it? The ATP is rehydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate, which takes us back to that stage. And that's the bit I think that causes problems for people. Okay, if you can remember that that's what it's like when it's unattached with ADP and phosphate, I think it makes life a bit better. So if if I use this pen here to represent the actin molecule, my fingers to represent uh, the myosin, I'm normally like that. Um, the tropomyosin moves out the way. It attaches. As it attaches, it bends, and then releases the ADP. Well, the ADP and phosphate is released. Um, as it bends ATP comes along which causes it to release ADP uh, and phosphate by the hydrolysis of ATP and it reattaches bends in the power stroke and that's when it goes on so it's you know remember the point that the ADP is released that's when the power stroke happens the ATP attaches and then when it's hydrolyzed down to ADP that's when it moves back so it might be worth you Kind of drawing out these steps and, saying, uh, and, and working out at which point the ADP is released and at which point the ATP forms ADP and phosphate. So ADP and phosphate get released in order to move it the head. ATP attaches. It's hydrolyzed down to ADP and inorganic phosphate, which causes it to go back to that shape.